Hello survivors, <clears throat> welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about the game, the game the narcissist plays with you. This is a uh, uh, confusing, uh, degrading, uh, shit-filled bunch of mind game fuckery that uh, you're going to spend your whole relationship trying to figure out from one minute to the next and so basically what this fall boils down to is just uh, an insecure individual who needs to have somebody um, by their side at all times or somebody to manipulate or somebody to uh, do things for but the whole game is uh, it's about power and control um, See, the narcissist is all about being addicted to people, and the narcissist needs someone to feed off of your energy. Your emotional energy, basically, is what they're looking for. Um, this means that the more emotional you are, the more you feel for them, the more you love them, the more you want them. This makes them feel alive. So, uh, the narcissist is always, always searching and testing you to see where you stand in this. So, I'll give you an example. If the narcissist is threatened by uh, a, a friend of yours, and this happens to be either a male friend or a female friend, um, if you're a man, if the narcissist is, if you have a female friend, the narcissist is jealous of this. So the narcissist will, one, see that you're communicating, talking to, you know, it could be a coworker, it could be a, a you know, just a friend on the street or whatever, or a long life, you know, long lost friend that you just meet again. Well, the narcissist is uh, very jealous of this. So, for one, you know, obviously the silent treatment will happen because uh, the, jeal the jealousy is so intense um, that the narcissist is feeling threatened by this and doesn't know how to react to this. So, the narcissist goes into this little silent treatment as to make you feel like you've done something wrong, which you haven't. Um, I know, crazy making, but to the narcissist, this makes sense to them. It doesn't make sense to us, but it makes sense to the narcissist. Um, the narcissist sees that you're talking to this person, having a good time, laughing, and, you know, and then the next thing you know, the narcissist is kind of like unsure whether or not you're serious about your relationship with them. So the narcissist goes into test mode, and the narcissist has to feel uh, secure in your relationship, and so the whole time that you're being given the silent treatment, you're wondering what the hell is going on, you know, but the narcissist won't tell you, but deep down, the narcissist knows exactly what's going on, so the narcissist being so jealous... Uh, can't get over the fact that you have somebody else in your life, you have other people who you talk to. Um, so the narcissist really feels like they're not good enough for you at this point. So, uh, and they're jealous and they're scared that you're going to leave them. Because you're talking to this person. Yeah. Or if you, uh, another example, if you, if somebody posts, if a friend posts something on their social media page, and you like the picture. Well, the narcissist sees this, and they're they're flipping out. They're they might not come out and tell you that they're flipping out, but deep down, they're 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 stewing. They're boiling in in anger and jealousy and hatred. And um, the overt ones will definitely let you know, but the covert ones will definitely just keep it inside of them and be silent about it, but yet give you the cold shoulder and things like this is the game. Okay, um, they want you to feel like you've done something wrong, right? They want you to feel as if um, you're losing them. But really, what's happening is they're feeling that they're losing you because they don't have the, the control and the power to make you not have any friends or have any life. That's basically what they're trying to... Eventually, they'll try to get, to, get you to that point, but the narcissist is very scared. The narcissist doesn't want to feel threatened at all. And so the narcissist tries to just make you feel like shit 
for just talking to somebody. But at the same time, they won't come out and tell you this. This is part of the silent treatment. This is part of the passive aggressors. This is part of the, uh, the weakness in them. Um, they want to make you feel like shit. And it's the whole point of isolating you and treating you so horribly to bring you down and to make you feel like shit. So the narcissist will retaliate either with a, a silent treatment or they'll go out and do the same thing you're doing. Uh, they'll go find somebody who they can just talk to and, you know, as a, how do you like that? How does that make you feel? You know, now you know how I feel when it's just, it's, it's just so stupid. So the reason behind this is they're scared. They don't want to lose what they have. And in the back of your mind, you're going, damn, what the hell did I do? Well, I better not do that anymore. I don't know what I did, but I better not do whatever it was I, I did. And so you're going to start to walk on eggshells and make sure that everything you're doing is, you think is okay, but hopefully you're thinking the narcissist thinks it's okay, but uh, you never know. And this is the game. This is where they want you to be. Um, they want you to be on your heels at all times. They want you to be scared at all times. They want you to be second guessing yourself at all times. So it starts off subtly and then it ends up gradually getting more and more and more. And this is the game. Even when they're off with somebody else and they discarded you, they want you to continue to feel that uh, helplessness, that, that what did I do? What did I do? They always want you to make sure you're feeling, what did I do? What did I do? And to make sure that you are constantly trying to improve yourself so that you will no longer feel that way when you're with the narcissist. You, won't, you will no longer feel like you've done something wrong with the narcissist, but this never goes away. You might conquer or jump one hurdle with the narcissist, but then the goalpost will move. The narcissist goalpost will move because something else will trigger their insecurities or trigger their fear and trigger their uh, threats. And this is the mental illness. This is the uh, this is the game. This is how this is the testing that they do. This is the just the sheer uh, psychotic behavior that happens. And so you're every day you're living. You wake up and you walk around and you're like, "Is everything okay? Is everything okay? Is everything okay?" Um, the narcissist is like, "Yep, everything's fine." But you know something's not right. So you're you make it to where you're. Uh, living in a world of just confusion and this is where the narcissist wants you to be so they can have all the power and control over you and so the, the bottom line is that they're scared they're insecure they're uh, afraid to open up they're afraid to give you any space for fear of you of you leaving them uh, this is the game they're so afraid of you leaving they're so afraid of that injury that they're going to take when you do leave or when you do have enough that you just say, I can't take this anymore and take off. Um, but they're so uh, scared and insecure and have to control everything that this is the number one thing that pushes you away, which is they don't understand that. To them, this is complete. This isn't to them. This is normal. This is normal thinking to them. To normal people, it's it's like, wait a minute. This is not right. I can't even speak to somebody. I can't even have a conversation with somebody. I can't like somebody's picture on, on social media without you flipping out. And so when they're in a, <clears throat> when they're in that state of, I'll call it narcissistic rage, when they're uh, been offended or when they've been hurt or they've been angered uh, or they have been threatened or uh, even a perceived threat, it's a narcissistic injury to them and um, they go off into their testing mode. They're, they're testing you at this point. How much can he take? How much can she take? I'm going to do this because you did this. It is a battle. It is a constant up and down battle. You either do this or you don't do this. You either, it's either, you know, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. And so um, this is the game. They want you to be off on off guard, on guard, whatever. They want you to be so fucked up. They want you to be constantly thinking, what the hell am I doing wrong? 
what the hell am I doing wrong? Um, that way they can have power and control over you. So that way they never, you never know what's really going on. It's like, uh, I don't know, you, you just, you take it for what it is. You, you weigh it and you go, damn, this is way too much for me. And this is what they're afraid of. They know that they're screwing up. Uh, but at the same time, they're just not going to let their guard down. They're not going to be um, emotionally uh, hurt because they can't handle that. So when you're talking to somebody, just keep in mind that your narcissist is looking at you burning up with anger. And if you like somebody's social media, they're going to let you know about it. You did this, you did this, or, or you know, a lot of them don't. And then eventually you will, they will, you will find out why. Uh, you can go six days with a silent treatment and then finally go, what is your problem? What do you mean, what's my problem? You get it's in all kinds of argument. And so going back to the original statement, they want to pull on your emotional strings. So when you're in the battle, when you're on the battlefield with them, discussing what you did after six days of silent treatment, they are going, by your reaction, they're going, okay. He loves me. She loves me. She wants me. I can still evoke emotions in him. I can still evoke emotions in her. Okay, don't worry too much. It's okay. He's still there. She's still there. After six days of being treated like shit, you finally blow up and say, what the hell is your problem? And you get into it, get into an argument with them. Now you're fueling them. Now they know. Okay, well, it's nothing to worry about because he's still there. He, it, I, I'm still pissing him off or I'm still pissing her off. She likes me. There, I'm validated. So that's the thing. With, that's what's going on. That's the game. Um, it's all about validating them. It's all about making them feel alive. Even with a negative response to them. You could be just talking to somebody on the street. You know, you could be talking to your... You know, say your kids are in high school sports and you could be talking to a, a parent of another child and they could just flip out. You know, if they're jealous of that person or if, if they're threatened by that person, they, you will know about it either covertly or overtly. And eventually it's going to blow up to where they're going to give you the silent treatment for six days because they're pouting because they're losing control or either if they think they're losing control because you spoke to somebody or you like somebody's picture on social media and they got jealous about it and now they're feeling insecure that you're going to leave them so they need to pull in the reins and start to punish you because you did something that they thought that you shouldn't do. That's the whole thing. That's the game. You need to be doing what they think you should be doing at all times. If you don't, you're punished for it. Either by silent treatment, uh, you know, not talking to you, cold shoulder, going off someplace, um, you know, just treating you like absolute garbage. So that's the whole thing about it. Just to make them feel safe is that you have to be doing what they think you should be doing at all times. And if you don't, you are punished because that's a threat to them. That means they're not in control. That means they don't have the power. So, and it's a, to us, it's, or to the normal folk, this isn't normal, but to the narcissist, this is 100% 100 normal. And they're looking at you like you're failing them. They're looking at you like, hey, you're making me feel threatened here. You're not perfect. Uh, I don't like this. You are not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Because the narcissist is thinking, I don't want to feel threatened. I don't want to feel like shit. I don't want to feel like I'm losing control. And you're making me feel like that. It's your fault. You're the one who's screwing up. And, you, and, you're, and you're like, all I did was talk to my, uh, my, uh, my co-parent for my kid's softball team. That's all I did. And you're freaking out about it. Or I like somebody's picture on social media and you're freaking out about it. This is not normal for us to be thinking, but this to the narcissist, you're failing them. You're supposed to be that perfect supply that is you know, makes everything go away. Um, but that's the game. They're so insecure that they want to make you feel like shit all the time. So you stick around. So when they're feeling threatened and they're feeling scared, it's all in their head, but they don't understand that. 
they look at you like it's your fault. Your fault. You're making me feel like this. So, um, it's just a sad, sad situation. If you're in any of that, get out. Uh, people don't do that to normal people. I mean, you, you should be able to just have a conversation with somebody. You know, have a have a, have fun, healthy life. But with with them, it's 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 forbidden. Anything you do is always watched and always thought of in a threatening way to the narcissist that you just can't live with these people. And even though you could show them how much you love them, it's never enough. It's never gonna be enough, no matter how much you try. And it comes to the point where you just get up and leave, or they get so threatened by everything around your life that they can't handle it and they take off, you know? So, um, but they want to see that where the, where your emotions are. They want to see how, uh, you, you react to them. I mean, if you, if they're doing that shit, don't react to it. They're not, they're not getting any reaction. So immediately they're going to think, yep, I'm right. You, you don't want me, you want her or you want him. That's how they're going to think. And there's nothing that you can do about that because that's their, that's their thinking. That's the, that's the, that's the way they, they operate. If you're not pleasing them 100% of the time, and which is not possible, you know, which means that you can't make them feel like they're threatened in any way. You can't give them a reason to be scared in any way. You can't give them a reason to think that you're not emotionally invested in them at, at any time. Um, you, you can't do that. Um, so if that happens, then the narcissist is like, you don't want me, I'm out of here. Screw you. Um, so, but it all comes down to basically, uh, they are very, very weak people. Um, weak, weak individuals who can't handle any kind of slight or perceived slight to them or else they're going to, they're, they're going to lash out at you. It's going to turn into a narcissistic injury and it's going to turn into it eventually turn into a narcissistic rage where they're going to rage at you. It's all a game. And by you shutting off your emotions to them, they lose the game. You know, it's all about emotions with them. If they see that you have emotions for them, there's, they know that they still have you. And they're prodding and picking and their jealousy and their insecurity and it is just going to override their thinking and it's going to drive you absolutely crazy to the point where, you, where you're like, I can't take this anymore and you got to go. But eventually before that, you're going to try and do whatever you can do to make sure that they're satisfied and make sure that they don't have that, have those problems. And eventually you're going to lose yourself and you're going to lose your friends and you're going to lose your family around them because you're trying so hard to make sure that the narcissist is not jealous or envious or angry or scared or threatened. This is your job. This is your job to make sure the narcissist is not scared, angry, threatened, jealous in any way. This is your job. This is your job is to make them feel safe. And if you can't do that, watch out. You're, they're in, they're in it for you. Even a slightest like on a Facebook page, you know, uh, somebody you went to high school with post a picture that they're in a bikini in the Bahamas and you're like, Hey, good for you. You know, you're in the Bahamas. Congratulations. I like it. Oh no, 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 no. The narcissist is jealous of this. The narcissist is threatened by this and they are looking at you as a failure because you're not making them feel secure. So I just wanted to put this video out there to all those who are going through wondering why the narcissist is just so fucked up. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, that's all I want to say for this video. Have a great day.